Oh, and makers. Okay, so last video I assembled the outside of the in-move head, the um, remixed versions. So in this one, I'm actually going to assemble an advanced eye mechanism. So for this, I've actually attached fishing lines to this one already. I've printed this in the transparent filament like all these other parts which come out translucent and then I painted this one silver so that it looks a little bit different when the eyes are open so with with this one we need to use a fishing line to ac access one of the axes and I'll show you how that one works in a minute so let's start by tying a knot in this bit of fishing line. Now I'm not a fisherman so my fishing line knots are not the best, but they seem to hold together. Okay now that's done. We have these pieces that go in the middle to go up this way and we hold them in with some small short pieces of filament. Now these holes I've made sure I've cleaned out to two millimeters using a two millimeter drill. This one. That's just to allow it to pivot. Now it's hard to see it, but there is actually two holes, one here and one over here that the fishing lines travel through. And they come out up the top here. So we'll thread those through now. Okay, now we need to install the pin that this will pivot this way on. Okay so this can now pivot up and down and these two lines will turn the eye side to side. Why is that out of focus? second one. Okay one of the things I forgot to do was put the um, camera in. So this is a very small Raspberry Pi camera. It's all it's referred to as a spy camera uh, because the camera unit is so small and you've got a very thin cable going from it to the standard Raspberry Pi CSI cam connector. So I'm going to install that into here and that fits in the bottom down here. Now to hold it in place I'm going to use some hot melt glue. I did try in the previous version not holding it in place and the result was the camera twisted so the image wasn't loaded. Okay, now let's see if we can put it back in. Now you could put two cameras in this if you wanted to. I am not because I've only got the one and because I'm only using a very small processor I don't think I've got the processing power to run more than one. In fact I'm going to be struggling to run one with the processing power I've got available. Do 
do me. Okay, so now that we've got the camera in, I guess the next part is to set up the eyelids. So these are the eyelids. They've got little holes on either side for hinging. Now the advantage to using hot melt glue over something a little more permanent is that if you find that you have to get in and repair something you can always peel the hot melt glue off. If of course you use something a little more permanent like CA glue you're going to be in trouble if you ever have to pull it apart. Okay, I think we can start mounting a couple of the servos. So we'll, we'll have a look at these ones. Now, these are a small pulley disc. And you may have to file, there is actually a groove on the side here. You may have to file it out to suit your particular servo. I know I had to file this one. But before you mount those on, you need to make sure that's all centered. Okay, so they're centered. Now in the original files for this, he specced the... I don't know if I've got one here. No, I don't. Um, he actually specced the NG90 or the SG90 servos. Uh, I'm not a fan of those servos, they have a tendency to jerk on power up and will turn even though there's no signal. These ones will power up without moving until such time as they get a signal. Far better unit. Uh, this is a JX1109MG digital servo. Okay, so the idea here, get the other fishing line out of the way, you've got your two fishing lines that come up. Okay, put another knot in that just to be sure and trim the ends off.
So this one will mount in this way. And it's just the same story again. Now for the next fun part, there's still four more servos to be installed. So before we install the horn on that and connect it up, we will need to uh, make sure we centre it. Now, you can use almost any type of horn here, although the single sided one is the best. that would be that one and what we're going to do is actually make one of these holes a little bit bigger so we can get our push wire through and we're going to run a push wire from the pivot point on the eye back to the servo horn and because it's mounted on the inside it just makes it more difficult to get out to adjust so I'm just going to go and find uh, a little bit of wire I'm going to use. I need to make up uh, a total of four push rods like that. And that'll uh, one of our servos is for the left eye, one for the right eye. Then we have a servo for the bottom eyelid set and finally one for the top eyelid set. So I'm going to go find my bit of wire. Okay, at the end of the last video I was looking for some wire to make wire links to get between the servos and the uh, eyeball gimbals. So I found a bit of wire I thought would do the trick and when I went to feed it through the little holes for it, which are uh, these holes here, I discovered that the filament that I poked through is the hinge point from the eyeball itself going through here protruded too far into here, it come down to about here actually and so blocked that hole. That um, is something of a problem. So I've had to disassemble the eye, uh, take the eyelid off, pull the hinge pin out of the eyeball so I can get the wire that I'm using to drive the pivot through that hole then put the pin back in the eyeball so that uh, we can make it pivot back and forward and turn left to right. Okay so I've I left off with both these servos mounted Now, since I uh, did that I've installed this servo with the wire and this is actually the more difficult one because of the camera cable and it's connected into the gimbal and you can see it maybe you can see it through here so I'll try and zoom in a bit so as the servo moves back and forth it pulls on the eyeball okay so I've inserted the wire into this side so that we can push pull on that one but these two pins here are not in very far and they're loose so we're probably going to have to pin those in place I also need to install this servo which uh, I 
think I centered it. Soon find out if I centered it. Size two. Okay, so that's centered, and I have centered the horn on it. So, what I might do is actually put the screw in. So that it doesn't move too much. I have got it the right way too. Okay, so as shown earlier in the video, the horn is on the outside part, why it's pointing out like this one, and we'll just screw that into place. Move a little bit less there. I'd like to trim that one back a bit more. And just put a double hot melt glue on there. That'll help hold it in place. Same on this one. And to be on the safe side, we'll do the bottom pin as well. Okay. Now, you can see through here, we've got this set up so that it is sort of centre line down the shaft, which also puts it centre line of the servo horn. So what we're going to have to do is, part way through, and it's going to be hard to see, particularly with all the wires in the way, we're going to have to put an offset in our wire. So I'm going to pull it back as far as it will go. That way our offset won't be too far in the way later. Now I found the third hole back and this wire does actually go through those holes. We'll measure it up in a minute. But the third hole back is actually ideal. So we'll line this up with the third hole back and bend it there. Now as it turns out, I didn't have to open those holes up for this wire. It just happened to be the right size. Now let's try putting the uh, eyelids back on and we're still going to install the two servos that drive the, eyelid, drive the eyelids as well. Okay, so that's out right there. I'm going to use a shorter piece on this one. As it turns out, using hot melt glue is actually good if you do make mistakes and you have to pull them apart. So 
So let's set up the next two servos. Okay, so they're programmed. Now, one of these is going to fit in this way, and the other one will fit in this way. So the one that fits in this way is going to drive the eyelid on that side and its hole is located here so we're going to need to put the horn on this way. I may have to trim that horn back a little bit but it looks like it's clearing the other one. Now this one will go in this way, so I will have to unplug it while I do this. So the next thing we'll need to do is get some wire. So that's the wire I'm using. So I think it's listed as 0.8, but this is coming in at 0 0.72, 0 0.73, 0 0.72. It's the same wire I used for the eye gimbal push pull. I'm just going to cut some lengths, knowing that I'm going to be trimming it back again later. Right, so we've got to hook onto the eyelid first. Now you can see there's a hole here and then there's a matching hole on the other side down here. So what we're going to do, you can see looking down on it, there's our horn there. And the other one, the horn is down through here. This is going to be the harder one to do, so I might even tackle it first. We need to make a hook to go through for the drive. For that I'll use my pliers. I may have made that wire a little bit too long. I think in the original design um, Dakota 76 actually put a pin through there and then a universal type joint. But I'm cheap. for the second hole again. Alright, let's do the second one. I probably should have used something a little bit stiffer, but that'll do for this. I might have to upgrade them down the track, but that'll uh, get them into operating. So the next trick is to install this into the head of InMove. And we'll see how we go with that. So here is our in-move head. I haven't put the screws in for the skull. I don't think we need all these plugged in for the moment. So let's look at putting this in. Now when you look at this eye mechanism, there is down here a bit of a slope which stops this eyelid from coming all the way forward as far as this one can. We want the one of the eyelids to be able to close further than the other one. 
just to make it look more natural. So that'll be this one since it will close further. It can go down further and then open up further. So it's got a greater range of movement. So with this one, we're going to have to put it in up. So that's the downside. And I do believe we've run into a problem. Okay, while trying to get this in, the two outer edges, at least on this side, is touching on the front of the face but we're also hitting on the servo with this servo. If I lift it up and line it up this way, we are still going to be hitting. So that means that we can't get it in with that servo where it is. That servo is just too far forward for this mechanism to fit in there. I have run into this problem before, a little bit differently to this. So what we might have to do is modify where our servo fits. So I think we'll uh, do that and come back on the next video. And this is where remixes come in. So this plate here will have to remix to move this servo back. We don't actually need these holes. I'm planning on moving the Raspberry Pi up further. We've got plenty of room in the top of the head above that. So we'll do that, we'll move it up. Doesn't need these holes, so they can be removed. We'll move this back. Uh, probably mount one or two of these. Yeah, maybe not. Actually, I wonder if I could get one, get them in there. That would provide ventilation up through the bottom here for the cooling of the switch mode. Put one on each side, maybe. I really want to put two of these in, so... So I'll come back on the next video, part three, after we've remixed this and got it printed. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the like button if you like this video. Ring that notification bell. And I do now have a Patreon account that if you wish to support this. So if you want to help me in further developing of the robot, by all means join me on Patreon. Patreon supporters do get these videos earlier. And we'll see you on the next video.